If you've talked to parents of young kids throughout this pandemic, you've likely heard of parents trying to juggle work from home with kids home due to online schooling or lack of daycares being open. A new report from the School of Public Policy shows that COVID-19 disproportionately impacted parents with young children. One of the authors, Lindsay Teds, joins me. So Lindsay, what did the research reveal about the struggles for parents during the pandemic? Anybody who is a parent can sort of commiserate about the last year and what it's been like with schools closing, classes closing, uh, you know, curriculum going back and forth from online to face to face. I was facing all of that and I had to wonder um, what this impact was was having on parents in their labor market as I watched, you know, professional friends drop out of the labor market because of the of the pressure. And so we got all of the monthly labor force data and isolated the pandemic effect and found that uh, parents with children under the age of 13, uh, their employment is down, their hours of work is down, and their labor force participation is now going down. And the impact is even harder on parents who have kids under the age of six. Um, and so the parents are not all right. Has this research exposed maybe some inequalities that already existed, but then were really highlighted during this pandemic? Um, I mean, I, I think what was really interesting, you know, interesting to, to find was in the second wave, uh, when, um, when, that, when that wave hit, uh, dads uh, actually ended up giving up more hours uh, than moms did. Moms had already given it all up. <laughs> there was nothing more to give. So the dads uh, stepped up to the plate and reduced their hours of work for sure, without a doubt. But we didn't see the same thing in the third wave. What we saw in the third wave was women dropping out of the labor force. So as we hopefully, this is the end of the tunnel that we are finally seeing the light that we're coming out of this pandemic. As we come towards that and we look towards recovery for our economy, for, for just our citizens, what do governments need to do policy-wise? Policy-wise, I mean, there's, there's short-term and long-term. Like short-term, while we think we're coming out of this, there is prediction for a fourth wave. Um, and so what we need to prioritize keeping schools and ch child care centers open. And that means controlling community spread. We cannot have rampant community spread like we did in the first, second, and third waves, because that is what leads to classes being shut down, um, there not being enough staff available and, and so on. Second of all, we need to make sure that we have the right supports in place for parents as this continues. Uh, we do have the federal um, uh, recovery benefit uh, that is available to parents, but it's only $500 a week. And so professional women um, that are dropping out of the, of the labor force are giving up a significant amount of income. And this is just not enough to replace that. And there's no reason why Alberta can't have a top up to that. Uh, parents need labor market protections uh, to make sure that when they are reducing um, their hours of work that they are not then uh, just fired. Uh, this is a, you know, a serious, serious issue, but long term, it is showing the interconnectedness of the labor market, the economy and early childhood education and, and child care. And this government uh, has to prioritize a, um, their negotiations with the federal government uh, on that plan that was announced in budget 2021 of a Canada-wide uh, universal early learning and child care plan. And they have to understand this is, um, this is public infrastructure. This is what we need to have available if we're ever Ever going to actually fully recover from this pandemic. Any last notes from your research that you want to point out? Uh, you know, that uh, the the third wave was the worst wave uh, of, of, uh, on parents without a shadow of a doubt. We need to avoid any implications of a fourth wave because when we see women dropping out of the labor force, that's permanent and that is serious and significant. Thanks for your time. Lindsay Teds from the School of Public Policy.